Hello everyone, welcome to today's Novage webinar, Lens Design Professional Landscaping Software for Rhino. The webinar will cover the main features of Lens Design for Rhino, like the extensive plant database, fully customizable, the terrain modeling tools, and, and much more. They will show you the power of lens design integration with Grass software so you can automate many design modeling tasks. And who am I talking about? These uh, presenters uh, joining us today are Francesc Sala. Francesc is an architect and the product manager of Visual Arcs and Visual Arc and Lens Design. And uh, Elam uh, Gabuli is uh, has a PhD in urban and architectural management uh, from the Polytechnic University of Catalonia. She has seven years of experience as researcher and lecturer in landscape and urban planning programs, and nine years of experience as landscape architects. Who better than to introduce to you <laughs> Lens Design, which now you can see is um, available on the Novage catalog. And the Novage is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, faster service, and most importantly, no headaches. Check us out at novage.com. And now we also have, uh, I want to mention just quickly, we this week only uh, promo on uh, 3D CAD workstation that would be perfect for all um, your CAD workflows. And in enough about this, I'm going to share Elam's screen to begin with, and she will take you directly into the yeah. wonderful world of land design. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone. A warm greeting from Barcelona, Spain. I'm going to present you the lens design. Um, it's a short presentation, and later on, you're going to go with a live demo on, on, on the program. Uh, lens design is a professional landscape software uh, in two versions. Uh, there is a version for AutoCAD and another for Rhino. Today, we are going to uh, study the Rhino version but both versions have the same functions and the same toolbars just in different environment they work so uh sorry uh lens design lets you well it has a beam technology so it lets you to create 2d drawing then model it in 3D, then it automatically uh, generates a quantity takeoff list of plants and materials. And finally, uh, it lets you to create photorealistic images and videos by animation tools inside the program. So how is lens design used? I'm going to uh, show you uh, its main fields that lens design is useful. First of all, of course, it's for landscape architecture. And uh, in continue, it also used for green infrastructure design in civil engineering and in architecture, in urban planning, and also in environmental projects, for example, for modeling the forests. So why to choose lands design? I'm going to stress its main powerful features. First, lands contains an extensive plant database in 3D and 2D. The plant database includes uh, several filters that lets you to uh, select your adequate plant species according to the characteristics, to the climate, to the soil type. So you apply different filters and finally you choose your adequate plant according to these filters. Uh, in plant database, any species has several uh, representations, the conceptual, the detail, the elevation, the different crown type on 2D and the realistic model of the species. As you see on the top, you see the realistic form, the detail, the conceptual and the elevation mode of the same species. Uh, in continue, plant database includes the um, 
plant editor. Uh, then you look for any species in plant database. You can select any species and then play with these features to change uh, you know, it's a 3D model and uh, different characteristics of the species. Then you can save it as a new species or you can save it as the duplicate of the existing species, just the modified version of that. Also, uh, there are different representation modes, as I explained before. Uh, as you see, the conceptual, the detailed, the, the realistic, and from 3D to 2D, and you can choose and change or shift between different representations just by one click. Another reason is that Lance Design contains powerful terrain modeling tools. Uh, terrain can be created by lines, point clouds, or combination of lines and points. Then you can modify the terrain easily by control points. You can create cotton fields. You can create a different paths in, in terrain and then by control points in any moment of the project, you can modify these uh, operations. You can also uh, divide terrain and assign different material and different textures to the terrain. And uh, finally, at the end of the day, you will have the list of the land operation or earth moving operation, uh, which is generated automatically. Also, uh, there is a nice uh, tool that lets you to import terrain just by looking your location on the map. For example, in this example on, in Barcelona, as we are, uh, you find your location and lands generates the 3D model of the selected area uh, on the map. So it's used its own database to create the 3D model of the terrain anywhere in the world. So it's uh, quite useful for the areas that you don't have any topographic uh, data of the project. Uh, also, you can in continue import the 3D mesh of the area with the satellite image. Uh, so it's up to you uh, to which you need. You need the terrain or you need the mesh with the satellite image. Uh, LANS also has dynamic documentation tools that uh, lets you to uh, just by one click import the list of plants, materials, earth moving, irrigation tools, and also add the image of any species with the special comment of the product. And you can uh, you know, create all the dynamic documentations uh, in this way. In continue, it also includes irrigation tools that lets you to create irrigation plan of the project. There are uh, different tools that uh, lets you to import different emitters, uh, sprinklers, pipes, and uh, they are also listed automatically uh, in the program. Uh, the good news of uh, lands, uh, about lands design in Rhino version is the grasshopper components. As uh, you may hear about that, Grasshopper is a parametric design uh, program that lets you to create different um, projects with uh, just parametric design. Uh, of course, it's for an advanced level. It's not uh, something that uh, you, will, you will need it for sure. No, it's optional, but it's for more advanced level. This is an example of what you can do with Grasshopper. Uh, there is just an area. As you see, there's a curve and a line in, in the curve, which are using as, a, a, this line is used as the path. And we are going to populate this curve as a forest. So as you see, just by selecting a species, you can create the forest that much easy. The heights of the plants are dependent on their distance to the axis of the path. And by moving the path, everything changed automatically. It's just an example. Of course, there are hundreds uh, things that you can uh, apply with the grasshopper. In continue, Lance has uh, several hard escape tools that lets you to create parametric walls and curves, parametric paths and parametric fences. And also it lets you, there is a block library that lets you to insert blocks from the block library, or you can also 
always um, import blocks from other supported formats, for example, from SketchUp blocks. Uh, LANS also contains animated um, animation tools that lets you to create animated videos and realistic images like what you see here. Uh, these tools are including watch mode, virtual simulation, sun and shadow tools, render, and uh, some image filters. This is the design process with LANS design uh, is summarized in this short video, as you see. You can uh, model the terrain by elevating some curves and then create the terrain by that. Then you can modify the terrain. Uh, you can zonify uh, your project in different zones. It gives you the area and you can also assign different texture to different zones of the area. You can insert plants in, in the raw or uh, individually or in the forest mode. Uh, the plants can have natural variation and that's so interesting uh, to have natural uh, appearance you can add also uh, hard escape tools the different blocks and uh, you can shift from 3d to 2d in any moment of the project just by one click and uh, finally uh, you can list all the material that you have used just by one click and finally render the project by your render engine Uh, the LANS design workflow is shown here. Um, as you see, you can start technical drawing, I mean in 2D drawing with AutoCAD or with Rhino, and then continue modeling that in LANS design. Uh, LANS design, of course, it has a beam technology, so it lets you the documentation, to have documentation. Mm, well, for visualization, you can apply different renders, uh, you can apply virtual reality or print it in 3D. Um, for documentation, you can export directly from LANS design to PDF or to Excel. And uh, you can also print your drawings in different formats. In any moment of the project, you may have collaboration with other supported programs, for example, to import or export your model uh, from SketchUp to LANS design or from Revit or other supported programs. And uh, the nice uh, thing here also is that the, there are uh, several geographic tools and um, that lets you, for example, to import GIS data, DEM file, digital elevation models, and uh, topographic point clouds. And you can import them to LANS design. LANS by this data creates uh, terrain. So it was the workflow up to now. Is there any question that I can, or well, better let's to continue with the live demo. Uh, Francis, a will... second, let's see. Um, is there a future where lens will be compatible uh, more, direct, more directly with Lumion or Twinmotion? Well, we are practicing right now with Lumion and with uh, Twinmotion. Uh, well, it, it is working. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great news. Okay. So I'm going to share Frances' screen so you can really get into the software and show you all about lens design. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. so much. And I'm... Okay. Hello. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Alham. So <laughs> we're going to see, um, well, uh, what we have seen in the presentation with a live uh, demo, okay, basically the main features of land design and an overview of the of the interface and most useful toolbar. Okay, so um, I'm gonna put this back. Okay. So let's take a look at the main uh, set of toolbars of land design. So on one hand, we've got here some commands to insert different uh, objects. OK, so there are uh, vegetation objects that can be inserted individually OK, in different ways. So just by inserting them in different points or selecting uh, existing points, OK, or in a paint mode that we will see later, later on. 
Also, we can insert them arranged in rows or in forests or shrubs. Also, we can create uh, ground covers okay, with this command. And uh, here we can find uh, some civil work elements to insert walls, fences, stairs, paths, or uh, rows of uh, elements that we can find in the land design library. Okay, we will see uh, how to insert them. Finally, we've got here all the terrain uh, commands. So uh, we can insert terrains from points or curves, as Elham has described, or we can import them from the, from the web. Okay, or also we can import them from uh, digital elevation modeling and files. Actually, this option is available from the from the menu. Okay, so all the in this case we would select it from here. So all the commands are also available from the from the menu. And uh, well, also there is this toolbar for all the documentation tools. So there are commands for irrigation uh, elements. Okay, to insert sprinklers or pipes. The sprinklers can be arranged in a in an array way. Here, there are all the commands to list the elements that we've got in the model. Okay, so we will see later on to how to generate lists that are linked with the uh, with the object in the in the in the model. And um, well, some other tools for adding uh, plant tags, plant pho <clears throat> photos, labels, dimensions, uh, slopes, or uh, areas. Okay, like. We can zonify the, the project with this command or show uh, display the plant shadows in 2D. Okay. Um, finally, there are there is another toolbar for uh, opening the two main panels okay, of plant design, which are the edit panel that you can see already here, or the animation panel, okay, that will let us do some uh, animations, all right, according to the, the following settings that we'll see later later on. Um, in addition, there is a, here a command to uh, open the plant database. Okay, there is also a command that opens a filter image application, basically, uh, well, some application that lets you import images, apply some effects, and already make some uh, past production. Okay, of the of the rendering results. There is the command to set viewpoints. Okay, to shot renders, and uh, well, navigate interactively through the project with this walk mode. All right, but let's take a look at the Lance edit panel. So this is the most important panel from where we will be able to edit everything that exists in the model. For example, when nothing is selected, we can change the 3D representation of the, of the plants. So right now we're seeing the plants in a realistic mode. Okay, if we take a closer look, we can already see some materials and textures on that uh, object, okay. Um, this realistic mode uses a plant type, a plant, uh, let's say a file format of a 3D, a 3D plant that can store uh, different representation modes. And for that reason, we will be able to do some season change simulation. Okay. Actually here, we already have, which is the current season of the, of the model, so of the document. So if we switch to, uh, for example, to winter, some of the plants will, al will also switch to uh, well, the representation mode they have for that season. Okay. In any case, when we shot the render, these plants will be replaced by a more, by a more detailed plant. Okay. But from here we can uh, decide which is the season to uh, to shot the render. Okay. Um, also here we have the different representation modes, so we can switch from realistic to uh, elevation. Okay. Or uh, we can. Choose the conceptual if you just want to sh uh, show, you know, the conceptual shapes of the of the vegetation elements. There is uh, a detailed uh, representation as well, and finally the the realistic. Okay, so it's up to you which one you want to uh, show. Uh, also for working, it uh, may matter which one you use. Of course, the conceptual will uh, make it uh, will make it work more smooth. Okay, smoothly. Um, but of course, it's maybe nicer to see the project with the realistic plants. And in case you're working with a large number of plants, you can always show the billboard representation instead of the 3D. So basically, what I've got here is a billboard that you know orients towards the camera. And this way, we can handle like a large number of plants and still work very, very quickly. Okay. 
but uh, since it's a small project, I'm gonna I'm gonna show the 3D 3D representation. Um, also, all the lands elements have a, a 3D and a 2D representation. So from these buttons over here, this makes more sense if we see it from the top viewport. We can switch to 2D. So now all the elements, for example, the plants, will show this 2D crown, okay? Or the zones will uh, show a uh, hatch pattern as a 2D representation, same as the uh, ground covers, okay? That have this wavy contour and also hatch pattern. As you can see here, when we select anything, the edit panel changes and shows the properties that we can edit for each object, okay? And this is quite interesting uh, option because, uh, well, if you're used to work in 2D, for example, you can just uh, keep on working from the top viewport, all right? Work in a 2D representation, and at the end of the day, you just need to switch to 3D and everything will show with the textures. And of course, if you switch to perspective, you will be ready to uh, see the project in 3D and shot a nice render. Just to mention that all the materials that we see here on plants or on this uh, wall, on the zones, um, they can be rendered with any engine that you have in Rhino, okay? There is no need for, from your side to do any conversion of material because uh, any material is supported um, by Lance Design. Any render engine is supported by Lance Design, okay? Um, all right, so let's go to the top. Before we insert some plants, I would like to insert here a zone. Since this is something that we may uh, do at the very early stage of the project, right? Defining the, the areas of the design of this project and, uh, well, adding levels and get an idea of the, the, well, the areas that we're working with. So from the documentation tool, I'm gonna run the zonify command, which uh, can uh, be inserted as, you know, as an insert point or selecting the boundaries uh, if you already have a curve, okay? In this case, I'm gonna select this insert point. And now I'm gonna uh, just define a text and also a hatch pattern, okay? Just notice that from here, I've got the uh, option to assign material to that uh, area that will be displayed when we switch to the 3D representation. So actually, Land Design provides a library of materials um, that you can use if you if you like. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, select any of these materials right now. Okay, there is some options to change the reflectivity or transparency. Okay, and uh, well, after inserting the this zone and inserting the level in any position. If we switch to 3D, we'll see this uh, material for that uh, for that zone. This is something that can be changed afterwards, okay? So from the edit panel, you've got here the same uh, information as we had in the insertion uh, dialog. So here we can change again the material. And actually, if you have already a library of materials, you can uh, select them with this option. So here you can see all the materials that are existing in the in the document. So you would just need to select them from here, okay? But I'm gonna change this back to the to the material provided by Lens Design. Okay, now I'm gonna switch to 3D. I will just delete this plant because I'm gonna insert a new plant, okay? So I run the plant command. Again, we've got an insert dialog with a list of species. So if I uh, check this, I can see the, the species that we have already used it in this document. And of course, we can choose any of them or browse for the plant database to select uh, another one. Okay. So here we can see the list of uh, the nearly 2000 species, okay, that comes with the, come with the program. And from the right side, we can see some images, okay, from the, of the plant and the different uh, representation modes assigned to each species. Okay, so we've got the, this realistic uh, representation, but also the detailed or the conceptual, or also the 2D crown or the sending out symbol when we show the plan in 2D. All this information is customizable, okay? And uh, well, if you want to search for one specific uh, plant species, you have all these uh, details, okay, and characteristics to search for one specific plant, okay? So just by 
selecting these characteristics, you will find the desired species, right? That match with these criteria. Uh, also, you can use this uh, search box to say, okay, I want to uh, search for a lemon tree. Okay, so here the list filters the species that okay matches with this name. So I'm going to select this one, and uh, well, let's take a look at the properties. But just before, notice that here we have two buttons to make uh, a, a copy of this species. So we will be able to uh, edit the copy to let's say uh, define a new species from that uh, copy, or we can just create a new uh, species from scratch. So actually, you can add new species if they are missing in plants and plant database and uh, fill all the data of this new species uh, as you want. Okay, let's take a look at the property sheet of the, of the lemon tree. All right, so here you can see all the details. If we check this uh, edit uh, button, we will be able to modify this uh, data. Okay, so you can add some comments or description here and check all the characteristics and change anything you like. Um, these changes, by the way, are, uh, are done on the plant database. That means that if we open a new document, we'll see these changes, okay, done. Um, <clears throat> but, well, from this display uh, tab, we can change it to the drawing for that, uh, for that plant or the conceptual and detailed uh, shape. So actually we can look for a different uh, 2D crown, okay, from the, from the library of 2D blocks and select uh, just a new, a new one. Okay. If you have your own uh, 2D blocks for the for the plant grounds, you just need to add them to this folder and use them if you like. Okay. So this is pretty customizable. And uh, well, let's take a look at the render tab because here is where we can uh, assign the NXT plant file that uh, is used in the realistic representation. And this is the one that can store, you know, a different. Uh, representations according to the, to the seasons. So actually from here, I can browse the folder where all these, you know, realistic plants are stored. <clears throat> okay. And what I'm gonna do here is to uh, launch this plant editor, which is the plugin that comes with, uh, with land design that lets you modify the appearance of, the, any of these file types. Okay, but also you can create new ones. So you can just play with these parameters Okay, this is very fun to play with until you find the proper uh, appearance. Okay, and um, well, there is some parameters for the for the appearance, general appearance, but also for the trunk or for the foliage. And just notice that here we can change the uh, texture assigned to the to the leaf or to the fruit. Okay, so we can decide whether this has fruits or not. And here you can see also the different definitions that are already created for this uh, NXT uh, plan. Okay, so if we change this, we'll see uh, well how it changes in appearance and in which season they uh, it is assigned each one of these definitions. Okay, and we could make any changes here and add a new definition that would be assigned to the only uh, season left. Okay. I'm not going to do this by now, um, but just take into account that if you need to create a new file from scratch, there are you know, some templates here that you can use, for example, for a new conifer, all right, to start from completely from zero to create new species, new NXT plant files. Okay, I'm gonna close this by now, uh, back to the, to the program. Uh, I want to, I don't want to, change any anything from this plant species. I'm gonna just select it, okay? So I'm gonna define here the height of the plant. Also, there is this natural variation or random rotation that if if I insert multiple uh, items, multiple plants, so H1 will take different values, okay? So they don't look similar one to another. And uh, well, I say, okay, and I can just insert the plant whatever I want, okay? Now the plant is here. So we can select it and from the edit panel, change the head. Okay, change the, uh, the, the species. We could actually browse for a new species here. Okay, and do whatever you want. All right, 
So we'll get back to the vegetation uh, commands, but first I would like to show some of the terrain uh, commands, okay, the terrain modeling tools. As Elham has said, it's one of the uh, most important features of the, of the program because it gives you a very, uh, well, a wide uh, freedom to, uh, to create any kind of terrain. Actually, we've got here a rhino surface. So this is just a, you know, uh, an open surface so we can change the, you know, the topography by pulling control points. And uh, while well, there are different ways by which we could convert this surface into a land through terrain, okay? But something that you can do before is just to uh, tag this object as a, um, okay, just as a, um, as a terrain, okay? Just a second, I'm gonna plug the battery. Okay, there we go. So this option is available from here, okay, from the edit panel. And once you do this, all the plants that are located underneath this, uh, this surface will be projected on top of the surface, all right? And they, are, they get linked to this, uh, this surface position. So for example, if I make copies of this, uh, of this plant over this area, okay, they detect the position of the surface and project on top of it. If I modify also the position of this, uh, of this surface, also, you know, the plants detect the new position and update. Okay, so there's a link of the position of these plants with the objects that has been tagged as a, as a surface. Um, but of course, this object doesn't have all the uh, commands that are available for a true terrain. So what I'm going to do here is generate some sections, lines, okay, some contours of this surface uh, to, uh, that will be used to generate a terrain afterwards. So I'm gonna run the contour command. Okay, this is just a Rhino command. Select the, ob the object to make the contours with. And I'm just following, you know, the instructions in the command line. So I'm gonna set this as a start point, define the direction of the contours, and finally the distance between contours. So two meters will be fine. And since I've got these lines created already, I'm gonna place them in one specific layer, okay, that I can hide them afterwards. And actually I can just delete this surface. I'm not, I don't need it anymore. And I can now run this, the terrain command. Okay, and select the curves afterwards. Just notice here that terrain uses this Delaunay triangulation method. Okay, according to the input data that will be all these contours. But you can also choose this gridded surface shaped to triangulation to uh, control the size of the cell of the resulting mesh. So we will have control of the accuracy of this uh, terrain according to the input data. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna select a base. Okay, so I can define also um, the distance of the base. And I will now select the curves, except this one that I will use now, well, later on for, a, for adding a path. And there we go. We've got here the terrain, so we can hide the auxiliary lines that are not linked with the terrain anymore, but they have been stored by the, by the terrain. Okay, so we can select now these control points of the terrain if you want to modify, you know, the position, the topography. Okay, so you can actually change the topography of the of the terrain by pulling all these all these control points, and if we check the terrain from the edit panel, you can change the well the cell size. You can change the uh, input data. Basically, here we can see the list of all the uh, curves that we have used. Okay, so we could can check the control points. So every time we select the the terrain, we don't see those control points. And here you could select any of these profile, section profiles, okay, and delete it if you, if, if you want. So the terrain we will recalculate it with the resulting uh, contours, okay. Um, all right, actually from here, 
from the terrain, we can also decide how to uh, how the contour lines will be displayed. So we can define uh, the contour lines as a number of contours or distance between them, which makes more sense. Okay, so I'm gonna define contours every 20, centi 20 centimeters. And uh, when we show the project in, in 2D, okay, we will see all those contour lines on the terrain. Okay, actually there is a nice feature in the contour lines, which is uh, to uh, enable these index contours every certain number and define the, the line weight or the different color for these indexed contours. Okay, and I'm gonna change the size of this text and this makes it more uh, clear, you know, uh, how the contours are defined for this terrain. So I'm gonna switch back to 3D and actually all the objects can show simultaneously the 3D and 2D representation. So in case of the terrain, this is quite useful and this option is available from here. Okay. Um, well, in the same way, the zone had a, a material, also terrain has a material. So we can change that from here. Okay, and select maybe this, this grass texture. Okay and uh, have a nice texture very, very easily. All right, let's take a look at uh, some of the commands that we can apply on this terrain, for example, the path. Okay, so I'm gonna run this command, select the terrain. I will define the width to three meters and an angle along the path. Okay, the, the way the terrain will be modified uh, in order to match with the position of the curve. And remember that curve that I had over here. So I'm gonna select it. Okay, this is a curve in the 3D model space. So the path will be adapted to the position of this curve as you can appreciate here. Okay. Um, of course, if I add more level of detail to this uh, terrain, so I'm gonna put a smaller cell size. This, uh, well, this path will be more accurate according to the position of the curve and how it meets with the uh, with the terrain, maybe you can appreciate that there is a kind of subdivision here generated. So basically, from the top left uh, corner of the dialog, we can select this subdivision, and we could uh, generate a zone, okay, for it, or we could uh, assign a different texture if you like. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go to the library of materials and select maybe this. Uh, I don't know, a gravel, for example, okay? And if I select the terrain, just notice that, uh, well, I've got the, the option to select the control points of this path and modify the position of the path afterwards, or under the input data of the terrain, I also have the information of this path. So I can select here under the earth moving operations, the path, and I could change the cut and fill angle, or I could change the, uh, the path width. Okay, so all the operations are parametric and you can edit them uh, from the edit panel at any, at any time. Um, all right, so now that we have got the terrain, let's insert some more vegetation elements. So I'm gonna work from the top viewport and uh, I will insert a forest in that area. So I'm gonna run the forest command and here, well, first we've got here the information of the plants that we will use in this forest. So I'm gonna just use one of the uh, species that uh, we have used already. We need to define the height of these plants. Here, maybe it's worth it to enable also the natural variations. We don't want that all the plants have the, exactly the same height, but uh, you know, different uh, height according to a percentage. And um, under the forest uh, tab, we can define the well, the parameters of this forest. So we've got two options to distribute the plants. So by a uh, number of units, okay, you can also define the distance uh, among these uh, units or by a regular array, okay? We'll check that later. So I'm gonna select this option. And now, if you had a boundary curve in the project, you could select it, or you could just draw, you can just draw it using any of these options. Okay, so I'm gonna disable the, Osnaps and just draw the the new boundary from 
this new polyline. Okay, you don't really need to close this. When you do right click, you know, the forest boundary closes automatically. And let's take a look at the 3D because the forest is already projected on top of the terrain. Okay. And just by selecting it, we will be able to modify the parameters of the forest. So the number of units, if you want to use this array distribution. So let's say, for example, we want an array of three by three. Okay. And you can even combine a species. So when we select the forest, we've got here an option to say, okay, I want two number of elements. And when you do this, you know, from this part of the dialog, you can select each one of the species and change the uh, attributes of the of this plant. Okay. All right. So, and of course, if you want to modify the boundary of this forest, we've got some control points. Okay, around around the uh, the boundary to modify the okay the the position of this of this boundary, as you can see here. All right, um, let's insert a, a ground cover now. Okay, I'm gonna work from this top view perfectly. So I will run this ground cover command. I'm gonna browse for the plant database to select one species that actually, um, species that are used from ground, for ground covers use a different uh, NXT plant, okay, that generates a different 3D than individual plants. So I'm gonna select uh, any of these species like this one, for example. Okay, and uh, I will say R K and also as I mentioned at the beginning, in 2D the the ground covers will be represented with um, with a hatch pattern. Okay, so you can change these uh, parameters here. And when I say okay, I could also define like an existing boundary curve or just draw it. So I'm gonna draw it as a rectangle. Okay, and I'm gonna draw it in this position, for example. Okay, there we go. So uh, of course now we can change the, you know, the boundary of this part there, just pulling these control points, if you like. And um, if we switch to a 3D representation, okay, we'll have all this this gun cover already projected on top of the on top of the terrain. So basically, these gun covers are also used for uh, for vertical uh, green walls. Okay, so for example, if we want to add like a, a ground cover on this uh, on this wall, I have already you know a curve in a vertical position. For this purpose, we can just run the parterre command. Okay, I'm gonna uh, choose the same species that I used before, and now I'm gonna just select this curve you know to populate this area with that with that uh these species okay if you want it more dense you can just uh, select this uh ground cover and say okay I wanna like a higher density okay or i want to decrease the size of the plant so i'm gonna put this value to 0 0.6 for example all right so this ground cover command is very useful also for vertical green walls. Now, let's take a look at some of the uh, civil work uh, objects. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, insert a wall, for example, here, which is basically a parametric object that you can change the thickness and the height and also assign a specific material to it. So I'm gonna select uh, these default options and, well, here you could select an existing curve or draw it, you know, on the fly, choosing this polyline options here. So I'm gonna just select, create this this wall, okay, finish it here, and uh, well, you can change, of course, the features afterwards. But here I would like to highlight uh, an interesting option, which is uh, a kind of match properties command to make an object equal to another that already exists. For example, if we want to make this wall equal to another, just we would select this copy properties from another object, select that other object, and the wall will just match, you know, the height, the material, the alignment, and all the other details. Um, 
let's take a look also at this command. It's quite interesting, okay, because it arranges uh, blocks, okay, that we can find from the block library. So I'm gonna open the block library to uh, well to browse for the blocks that come with the program. So we can see different blocks for fountains, for games, people, stones, okay, urban furniture, also water games. Actually, you've got here some uh, access to commercial products catalog that they offer 3D models, okay, in their in their uh, well in their websites. So you can find their information here if you want. And um, I'm gonna insert some maybe some urban furniture, maybe some some of these street lights, okay. And well, here you have all the features of the sample, okay, of the orientation and all the features of the row. So I'm gonna select maybe a separation of six meters and a distance to the axis because I, I'm gonna use the same axis for the, that I used it before, part of the path. And uh, maybe say 120, say okay. So I'm gonna finally select this curve. Okay, and have the all the street lights, you know, aligned with that with that path curve and also uh, projected automatically on top of the, the terrain. All right, let's take a look at the documentation tools. Okay, some of them. Um, so I'm gonna switch from top viewport, show the project in 2D. And uh, well, we have inserted zones, we have inserted plants, terrains, blocks. Let's quantify all this information, okay? so. First of all, we can insert a plant list that shows uh, in a synchronized way all the plants that we have in the model. Okay, so for example, if we uh, select all this forest and change the well the the, the arrangement of the of it, you will, you can see that um, well the number of uh, plants for each species update. Okay. Um, well, same thing for all the other uh, objects, so we can insert a block uh, urban furniture list, we can insert a zone uh, list, okay? And uh, same for the uh, terrain, actually. With this list, um, we'll get the amount of volume uh, of land that has been added or removed from the original terrain according to the, uh, to the operations that we have performed, okay? In this case, the, the path. And, well, there are some uh, options available for customizing a little bit the appearance of the of the list. So here you can uh, select different borders. Okay, you can define also the size of the text and um, and font of the text that appears here. Also, here from the plan list settings, you can uh, select which information you want to you want to display. For example, we can display the density that will be useful for the you know for the uh, ground covers. Okay, and uh, well, actually you can customize this list with new new data. There is an option um, to add like custom parameters to the to the objects, which is available from the document properties. So if we go to tools, options, and we go to um, parameters, we can add a new data, a new parameter, for example, the price. We define here a category and some data type. I'm gonna put here currency. And now if I select any element, for example, all these species in this, uh, in this forest and go to the properties panel, we've got here this parameter section where we will be able to add data to this, uh, to this, uh, to this element, okay, in this case, the forest. So let's say that uh, the price is a thousand and we want to display this information now in the plan list. So now we go back to the edit panel and in the list of fields to show, we will get also this one, the new one that we have created. And for the two species that got values, okay, we will be able to display them. Okay, I'm gonna move this list up here. And um, finally, if you want to uh, export that list, okay, you can do it from here. So you can export that and export it as a, um, as a web uh, format, HTM, or 
XLS to uh, open it in Excel, for example. Okay. So we'll cancel this by now. And let's see some other uh, documentation tools. Maybe it's interesting to see this plan level. So for example, we can select this row of uh, plans and get you know the number of uh, plants and the index okay. we can check the index actually from you know from the legend so we are seeing here these uh, bamboos but uh, if you prefer you can select this level and show the initials instead okay and of course if we edit the, the parameters of this row let's say that we want six uh, units this level will, will update as well some other interesting commands for documentation is the plan uh, photo. So I can select now this row of bamboos and we'll see, you know, some images uh, imported from, from Google. If you have your own image, you can use them if you want. But uh, here we could select any of these pictures and insert, you know, uh, a picture with the name of the, of the species and a, an arrowhead. Okay, and uh, well, let's take a look also maybe the slow command. This is interesting because it's an annotation that uh, know, changes the size of the text that if we pick any curve, it will uh, measure the elevation of the start and end point and calculate the slope. It doesn't take into account the different variation of slopes in the in between though. But of course, if you, uh, I mean, I'm gonna repeat this command, um put text height to 0 0.5 and i'm going to use this polyline option instead to measure for example the <clears throat> the slope from this point to that other point okay so uh we can measure exactly the the slope of this uh of these objects okay if you if we move the position of this of the end point or the start point the slope will will update Okay, so here finally we can use these plan shadows. If we want to give more uh, interesting feeling to that uh, to the drawing, we can enable the plan shadows. Okay, to show these shadows, these hatches projected on, at the bottom of each plant, and from the edit panel we can edit the direction, okay, or the height basically, how deep we want to show these shadows. Okay, we can also change the um well the hatch use it for the for the shadows to to any other uh hatch pattern all right it's this uh, the orientation of these shadows is not linked with the sun position okay of the current document is something that you uh you change uh, freely okay and not necessarily needing with the current position okay well i'm gonna delete them by now and let's take a look at the, the animation tools. So I'm going to switch to 3D, show that in perspective, and we will play a very small animation. Okay, uh, so I'm going to show the animation panel, and here we can uh, give you know a name to that animation. We can define the frames per second or the total duration of it. Let's choose this option by now, and under the camera tab, we can define a curve as a camera path. We could also define a fixed point, but I'm going to choose the curve. So I've got this curve here for this purpose. Uh, now that it's already selected, I can actually hide it. And um, well, you can either decide if you want to look forward in the animation or look to a specific point or curve. Okay. And uh, also here we have more settings for the camera. We can also uh, do some season change uh, simulation during the animation. So actually, if we enable this, we will uh, be able to see the plants uh, at the beginning of the animation, the early spring and finish in winter. Okay, so we'll be able to uh, play this season simulation during the animation and also a plant growth. Okay, so we will start with the plants very small and at the end of the animation, they will have the size that we can see right now um these settings are not visible in the preview okay these are only uh visible with the final render when you show the render option because actually here you can choose between the current display okay which is the render or the current renderer so if we choose this option 
when we shoot a render, um, we will be able to uh, see all the season uh, change our plant growth animation. I'm going to choose this render display right now. Here you would decide the folder where you want to store, you know, the animation. But right now I'm going to just to show the preview. Okay, so with display button, we can see uh, well the itinerary of this short animation to get an idea of how it will look like. Okay. All right. So as you have seen, it's very pretty simple to use. And maybe it's interesting also to show the walk mode, uh, which is a command that was mentioned at the beginning that puts you on the ground. And just with the mouse cursors, also the keyboard uh, controls, you can uh, navigate over the project. I'm gonna just skip these bushes, okay? The terrain is detected, okay? So it's a fun way to navigate through the project or show it to anybody if you want. Okay. Just take into account that from the uh, lands help, okay, I'm going to show this now from the menu, you can anytime open this help. So you have here all the documentation for every single command, okay, and uh, in case of the wall mode here you can see all the mouse or keyboard controllers to change the uh, direction or speed of the of this walk mode way. Okay, so just take into account that you have all this documentation available uh, if you want to check all the possibilities of every command. All right, um, I would like to finish this presentation with another example of the integration with Grasshopper. As uh, Elham has mentioned, this is let's say a more advanced way of working with land design but it's also a really powerful uh, integration, okay? Um, Grasshopper actually lets you automate workflows, okay? Uh, using components. And also you can use the LANS components for in this, in this uh, automated process, okay? So you have, you have here the components to reference objects. We could reference the terrain and do some uh, slope or height uh, analysis if you want. Um, here under the lands, we can create new objects, okay, like plants, rows, ground covers, all these elements that you have, you have here, also terrains. So basically, we could reference, you know, that surface that uh, we had at the beginning, generate the contours on, you know, using components here or an intersection, and generate terrain out of this of these contours. So we, we would have, you know, a live connection with the original surface and the final terrain. But uh, I'm just going to show an example, okay, of, uh, well, a definition that references some plants. Okay, so I'm gonna draw here a few plants using this plant paint mode, which is also very, very fun to use. So I'm gonna use one species. I will make sure I have this natural operation you know, checked. And I mean, I just need to click to define the insert point and just paint over the area where I want to insert plants okay um all right so i'm gonna reference all these trees doing right click here set multiple plants so now they are linked with this component and what i do here basically is uh, with this component deconstruct this plant so you can read the exact position of the plants with this uh, option i can deconstruct the options and get the information of the species the height okay the amateur and so on and basically what I'm doing here is just generating some circles at the bottom of the uh, position of the of the plants and generate this kind of you know curves and, and pots. So with these sliders I can control the you know these curves uh, thickness or the height. But the interesting part of uh, this is that everything is linked with the position of the plants. So if I move one plant away, you know, it will be detached from the rest and the new pot will be placed here in the new position okay and of course if i uh change the height of this plant since the diameter of the circle is uh determined by the height of the plant okay i will get this uh, diameter of the pot uh updated as you can see here so this is just an example of how you can automate you know the parametric design with grasshopper combined with land design just to give you uh, an idea of what you can achieve, but of course the possibilities are endless, and also you can combine um, 
lands with other add-ons in Grasshopper that are used for hundreds of different purposes. Um, just to finish, I would like to, I mean, I don't have time to show the render and, you know, so I don't want you to wait for a, a good render of this scene. I'm just going to show the, um, some of the projects that we have in the land gallery. So if you go to the website, you can check some of the projects that have been done using land design. Okay. And uh, just to give you an idea of the quality of the, of the projects that you can obtain. And um, well, just to, in addition, you have here some learning material that you can check if you want. So there is a video tutorial to go through a project. There are some other video tutorials gallery. There is uh, webinars recorded. Also, if you want to learn uh, some of the basic tools for the Grasshopper components, you have here a few exercises as well. And uh, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, Barbara, maybe we could have some time to, to answer them. Yes, great. That was great. Thank you so much, uh, Francesc. We have uh, quite a few questions, so I'm going to start. Great. Um, are there limitations to file size since the trees look like they have many polygons? Mm -hmm. um, the limitation is on the, the level of detail of the, of the model, the quantity of geometry, and um, Actually, this is something that lens design uh, depends on Rhino. Okay. I mean, it's not a matter of how many units you have, because you can handle like thousands of units. But of course, if you're using the 3D representation, you know, you will, you will notice uh, the project lagging. Okay. In this case, we recommend using the billboards or, you know, just using another uh, conceptual, another uh, the representation modes. Okay. So if you want to, uh, have a good performance for modeling this project. It will it will run way faster if you use, for example, a shaded display, okay, or wireframe than uh, than realistic, okay. In this case, and of course, it will uh, be way faster to work with detailed, you know, a representation than with a realistic. Okay, so uh, it's not a problem of a number of units, for example, but uh, Okay, I'm going to show the 3D, but uh, the complexity of the geometry you have in the model, the number of different species, more than number of units. Okay, and uh, in any case, every, we depend on, on Rhino, on of course the machine capabilities and the hardware settings to handle, let's say, uh, large models. All right, and uh, a question from Jim. He says, "I'm a film." Our director and we take Rhino models into Unreal Game Engine for pre-visualization. Can I take plans I've created in Lens Design into Unreal? Um, we are we are analyzing this. Uh, I mean, you do you can. Um, I think that Unreal has a plugin for Rhino, as far as I know. And uh, then you should see all the geometry that you see in Rhino. You should see in, in Unreal. Um, but there we we are seeing a few uh, some issues with some uh, some of this software because um, well you know that all the geometry handles the textures in some way and these textures doesn't not they don't always go through uh, properly from Rhino to all these uh, render engines okay so we have seen that with Lumion for example or Enscape it works pretty well uh, we are analyzing now with Twin Motion we're seeing that uh, geometry is well connected, but textures don't. So we are still seeing, you know, uh, how smooth is this connection with other programs. With Unreal, we haven't tested, you know, uh, deeply. So um, we will, of course, and we will uh, work to make it compatible. Our, right today, I, I just noticed that uh, our, one of our development developers that are in contact with Twin Motion said mm -hmm. that now they solve the problem of issue the the issue with the textures so uh, so it will work right. quite yeah we're constant we are in touch with all the development team of these platforms and we're interested you know to cooperate to uh to make all the plans and land elements look correctly in these platforms okay so if you find any issues if you try that out please let us know because we are very interested to to cooperate with all these platforms okay and Great. be all part of the same workflow 
Great. And um, next question, can paths be created that are more organic in appearance, specifically different widths throughout a long path reflected in the surrounding terrain? And also, is it possible to create organic fields, areas that are not rectangular or circular? Okay, in the first question, uh, a path is, um... I mean, this, this object is basically extrusion of a profile along a path, okay? So you have full control of the, uh, of the profile, but it's, um, it has a regular width, okay? So the extrusion will be the same all along the, path, the, same, the same path. Uh, it, it can be useful in some occasions, but in others, you can just use the, you know, the Rhino tools for the sweep one or sweep two, okay? that are available for creating more complex, you know, extrusions. And at the end of the day, everything fits uh, well in the project. I mean, we could have, you know, any kind of freeform shape here with Rhino, Rhino tools. And, uh, you know, everything integrates into the, into the project and will look, will, will be visible in the plan views or the sections and so on. In the second question, uh, yeah, I mean, all these objects like uh, forest rows uh, can be created from from polylines or on, from control control curves. So, for example, we can have like a you know a curve like this, or even uh, a boundary like this, and create uh, a grand cover you know out of this out of this contour. Okay, so I'm gonna use this species and select this this curve. Okay, and we can use the same a curve to insert, for example, a forest, okay, of uh, lemon trees, for example. Okay, in forest, I'm gonna say I'm gonna want 25 units and select the same, uh, the same curve to populate this area with, uh, with the trees, okay. And in case of a row, we could select this curve, or for example, if we want a row of elements, again, we select acid platinoides, so like this, okay, this curve, or we can repeat the command and actually you can uh, draw the row on the fly. So we select this spline option here and just define the wall, the row on the fly. And later on, these objects can be edited, you know, with the same control points as the original curves that they, they were using. Okay. Any more questions? Yes. Um, so somebody's asking if this is also available for AutoCAD, which it is. And in it fact, is? I'm going to send a share a link with everybody um, because tomorrow we're going to have a second webinar similar to this one where Francesc and um, uh, Elam will um, showcase um, the plugin for AutoCAD. So yeah, watch it again, watch it again with us and definitely it's available for AutoCAD. And another question, let's see, there was one earlier. Um, can you adjust textures locations? Uh, because it looked like the Pavers did not meet the corners. All right. Actually, no. Unfortunately, these textures are aligned according to you know one endpoint, but you cannot uh, move it. You know, you can change the the scale maybe, okay, but you cannot you know let's say um, pan them uh, over the the area you know to change the position but uh well this is something that maybe we could add in future versions if this great will be great useful for, yeah for great version. idea is it possible to create a 3d model of a house in rhino and then insert in, in the terrain created in land design or the other way around of course yes actually uh we have seen just we have just modeled, you know, a garden, but if we had, for example, a, a house, you know, next to this uh, wall, I mean, everything would, 
will live in the same uh, model space. Or for example, if we would like to flatten a specific area here to insert a, a kind of, I don't know, maybe I can show very quickly one of these sure. cottages. Okay. And um, I'm gonna insert it here. Um, and maybe something that you, we could do is just to make it very quick, I'm gonna isolate, you know, this uh, this house. And I mean, we can uh, change the position of the of the terrain just by uh, well making a cut and fill. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a contour. Let's let's do it from the from the top. Okay, and all right. Since this is well, we should you know posit place this exactly in the same position of the where the where the base of the of the house. And uh, let's show back again. We can now run a cut and fill. Okay, or a hole to flatten the area along this uh, around this uh, this house. So we will just use this cut and fill command, pick the terrain. Define a slope. Okay, I'm gonna say 45. It's it's fine. I'm finally pick this this curve. Okay, so well, the terrain is flattened around this. Of course, we should maybe uh, add more more detail to the terrain. You know, to to be more accurate with this with this with this curve. So. I'm just going to select the terrain and here I would define maybe a small value. So we can see how this is flattened. Okay. So with a big project, it will be actually the same. We can see here the the cotton field generated to you know to place this uh, cottage on top of it. Any more questions? No, that's it. And I also want to let you go because I know it's very late in Spain. And <laughs> no I know problem. we have another appointment tomorrow, uh, same time, same place, where you guys will be uh, featuring uh, Lansens mm -hmm. with AutoCAD, and that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take quickly take the screen back and... All right you know say goodbye give you the last information about um where to find land design i want to thank everybody for attending and here it is uh novage.com land design is already uh on our catalog it there's a great discount right now uh i think till the end of the month so um you know uh size the size the savings and mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, of course, Novage um, offers all, all choices. And we also have Rhino, we have AutoCAD. So you can, it's a one-stop shop for all your design solutions. And uh, we even have a great uh, CAD workstation on sale right now. So you won't have any problems with rendering and polygons. And... Um, I've been recording this session and you can watch it again on YouTube and Vimeo. Just search for Novage. Thanks again for joining us today. And uh, to Thank you too. Francesc and Thank Omaha, you. I say until tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody. Tomorrow. <laughs> bye Thank bye. you. Bye-bye.